Here's an example of a binomial probability distribution, and this time I'm going to use a formula to find my probabilities. If you've been watching my videos or you watched one of the other ones, um, I, I had one where I found the probabilities using a tree diagram. Um, that, was the, that was the one where uh, I had a, a basketball player shooting foul shots. But now I'm going to show you how to use the formula for a binomial for binomial probabilities in order to come up with your form or to come up with your probability values. Okay, so I'm going to use a probability by of the I'm going to use the binomial probability formula, excuse me there, to create a binomial probability distribution for the following scenario. Well, here is the formula. Okay, this is a big, ugly formula. It's got a lot of stuff in it, but it's really not too bad. If you look at everything, this is just the probability of x, which is the probability of each outcome of a random variable. And then if you look at this part of it, what you basically have is a combination. Most of the time, or lots of times I should say, there are different combinations that could come up. So we need to figure out how many combinations there are. That's where we're going to use NCX or N choose X. P, lowercase p, is the probability of a success. Lowercase q is the probability of a failure. And x is the value of the random variable we're looking at. And n here and again here is the total number of trials. Now over here in the formula, basically I've taken the same thing, only I've changed n c x, n choose x, into its formula. Okay, the number of total number of combinations for a situation, if you have n choose x, would be n factorial over n minus x factorial times x factorial. Well, I'm actually not going to use this part of the formula. I'm not going to work this out every single time. I'm going to use technology to find my combinations. Technology, calculators, they're there, they're useful, so I'm going to go ahead and use them to find the total number of combinations. Well, now let's go ahead and jump to our example, and then we'll come back and use our formula um, after we define everything. A card is selected from a standard deck and replaced. This experiment is repeated a total of four times. Create a binomial probability distribution for the number of hearts that are selected. Well, the first thing I should always do with a scenario like this is check to make sure that this is a binomial probability distribution. So the first thing I need to check is, are there a fixed number of trials? Is there a fixed number of trials and there are it tells me right here that there are four times I'm going to, to deal a card put it back and then deal it again four times no more than that no less than that so there are a fixed number of trials the second thing I should always look for to check and make sure it's a binomial uh, probability experiment is there are two possible outcomes Again, that doesn't mean that there's a 50-50 chance in any case. It just means that there are two outcomes. And in this case, there are two outcomes. It's either a heart or not a heart. So there are two possible outcomes. The third thing that I should check to make sure it's a binomial probability experiment is that the probability of a success is the same every time. The probability of a success is the same. Well, the thing that tells me that the probability of a success, and in this case, getting a heart is a success, is right here, and replaced. There it is. Since I am replacing the cards, that means that the probability of getting a heart is going to be the same every time I'm dealt a card. And then finally, the last and uh, condition that I need to check is that the random variable x counts the number of trials, successful trials. S is the number of successful trials. And over here, I can see that, okay, right there. Uh, X, or the number of hearts is X, and that's the number of successful trials. Right there, right there, all the way up to four. All right, <clears throat> now that I've checked, let me get rid of all this. Now that I've checked to make sure that this is a binomial experiment, I'm going to go ahead, and all the conditions have been met, 
I'm going to go ahead and find, I've already set up my table, I'm going to find the probability of each of these. So let's start off, again, using my formula here. I'll tell you what, let me, <clears throat> let me do this. Let me take a picture of this formula right here. And I'll bring it down so it's a little bit easier to see as I go through these different probabilities. Scroll down the page just a little bit. All right, there we go. <clears throat> so I want to start off by trying to find the probability that I get zero hearts. I have to define everything first. Well, n is the total number of trials. So n is equal to 4. x is my random variable. So this will be equal to the number of hearts. P is equal to the probability of a success. And so I have to ask myself, all right, I am given a card. What is the probability that it is a heart? Well, in this case, the probability of getting a heart is equal to 1 fourth or 0.25. And then finally, I need to define Q. And that would be the probability of a failure and Q is always 1 minus P. So the probability of not getting a heart is 0.75. Probability of a success is 0.25. The probability of a failure is 0.75 because the prob P and Q have to add up to 1. So here we go. What is the probability that I get 0 hearts? What is the probability that my random variable X is 0? Well, let's use the formula. I know that n is 4, so this is going to be 4 choose x, right here's what I'm going with, so 4 choose 0, times p, the probability of a success, which is 0.25, raised to the x power, well, I know that x in this scenario, or this probability, is 0, times q, which is 0.75, raised to the n minus x, well, n is 4, x is 0, so 4 minus x is 4. And I'm going to use technology to find this probability. So let me pull up my calculator here. Move it off to the side so we can see everything. Let me get rid of this. And here's how I would use my calculator. I need 4 choose 0, so 4, I type that in. And then to get to the combinations, I hit math, go over to the probability menu, or the probability uh, tab, and number three is combinations, right here is combinations. So n choose zero, looking at my formula, times 0.25 raised to the zero power, right there, times 0.75, which is q, raised to the fourth power. So there's all my math. 4 choose 0 times 0.25 probability of a success raised to the 0 power times the probability of a failure 0.75 raised to the fourth. And I hit enter and I get 0 0.31640625. I'm going to round off to three decimal places. So I want to go 0 0.316. Now your teacher may ask you to do something a little bit different, round to a different number of decimal places, but I'm going to round to 0 0.316. 316. Usually three decimal places is pretty good because if you want to change it into a percent, you're rounding off to the nearest tenth of a percent. So that's, that's kind of what I go with lots of times. All right, let's find the next one. Let's go with the probability of... So I, let me go ahead and put that up on my table first. The probability that I get zero hearts is 0.316. Now let's find the probability that I get one heart. Let's go back to my formula. And all I'm going to do is change a few things. So the probability that I get one heart is still four choose one. Instead of zero hearts, I've got one heart. That's my x times the probability of a success, which always is the same, 0.25, raised to the first power. Look at your formula. I've got x. That's one. 
And then finally times q, which is still 0.75 raised to the n minus 1 or n minus x power. And in this case, it's 4 minus 1, which is 3. Now I'm really spelling this out because I don't want anybody to miss it. So I'm not rushing through this example or this particular uh, probability. Um, let me go ahead and jump back to my calculator. This is kind of nice. When you look at your calculator, all you have to really do is go, if you hit second and then enter, it brings up the, the last entry that you plugged in. Well, if I arrow to the right spots, I can just change the things in the formula that need, that need to be changed. So this would be 4 choose 1 times the probability of a success raised to the first power. So let's change the 0 to a 1 times the probability of a failure raised to the, in this case, third power. So I just change those values, the two exponents and my x value. I press enter, and there I get 0.421875. Well, I'm going to round off to three decimal places. So I'm going to go 0.422. All right, let me move my calculator out of the way. And I've got 0.422. So the probability of one heart, or getting one heart, is 0.422. Let's come down here and set up the next one. This would be the probability that I get two hearts. Well, that's going to be 4 choose 2 times 0.25 raised to the second power times 0.75 raised to the second power. Now, I've done the math already, and I'm not going to plug into my, into my calculator again, because if you need help with that, you can just go back in the video and figure out what the probability is that way, or try this on your own. I end up getting 0.211. So let me put that into my table. The probability of getting two hearts is 0.211. And let's go to the next one. The next one is the probability of getting three hearts. So that's four, choose three times 0.25 raised to the third power, times 0.75 raised to the first power. And again, I've done the math already, and I get 0 0.047. So let me go ahead and plug that in here. The probability of getting three hearts is 0 0.047. And finally, the last one, the probability of getting all four hearts. So let's plug this one in. The probability that I get four hearts it is 4, choose 4, times 0.25 raised to the 4th, times 0.75 raised to the 0, and the math there gives me 0 0.004. So the probability of getting 4 hearts is 0 0.004. Now one of the nice things about probability distributions is you can check to see if you've got the right answer. So I've got, I want to take each one of these and I want to add them up and make sure that they are equal to 1. So if I go 0.316 plus 0 0.422 plus 0 0.211 plus 0 0.047 plus 0 0.004, I do get a sum that is equal to 1. The sum is equal to 1. So that tells me that I most likely have set up my probability distribution the correct way. That's a lot of stuff that we've talked about. Let me just point out one last thing. One of the nice things about these binomial probability distributions, look here at the exponents. 0 plus 4 is 4, and 4 is n. You've always got to make sure that that's correct. 1 plus 3 is 4, and 4 is equal to n, the total number of trials. So when you look at the exponents, and you add the exponents together, they should always be equal to n, the total number of trials. So there's an example of how you can use a formula for binomial probabilities to, get to set up a binomial probability distribution. It was a long one, but I hope it was worth it. Thanks, and keep watching.